Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got something really special for you. We're going to be demonstrating how to perform web scraping using the chat GPT's code interpreter. This method is straightforward, efficient, and doesn't require any plugins or other methods I've shown you in the past. We'll be diving into real-world examples, scraping data from popular websites like Amazon. But before we get started, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update from us. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. All right, let's jump right into it. Firstly, my objective is to extract specific information about phones from Amazon, specifically their names and prices. To accomplish this, we'll begin by saving the web page. After the file is saved, let's proceed to the next step. We're going to head over to ChatGPT. ChatGPT has a handy feature, a new upload button, which we'll utilize to upload the web page we've just saved. This is a simple and straightforward process. Just a click and select the saved file. Once the upload is complete, we're going to instruct ChatGPT on what we need it to do. We'll frame our prompt as follows. In this web page, can you extract the phone name and price and save the extracted data in a CSV file? This prompt is clear and direct, telling ChatGPT exactly what we need from the web page. As soon as we send this prompt, ChatGPT springs into action. It first provides us with some information about its training cutoff date. While this is interesting, it's not particularly relevant to our current process, so we won't dwell on it. Then, the magic begins. ChatGPT starts working on our request, processing the web page, and extracting the data we asked for. After a short while, it presents us with the first five entries of the scraped data. It's a thrilling moment, seeing the product names and prices appearing right before our eyes, data that we've successfully extracted. But that's not all. ChatGPT then provides us with a link to download the CSV file containing all the extracted data. With a sense of anticipation, we download and open the file. And there it is, a comprehensive list of all the phones and their prices, exactly the data we wanted. It's a testament to the power and efficiency of web scraping with ChatGPT. It's quite an impressive and satisfying result, wouldn't you agree? This is a great start, but I'm also interested in obtaining the product links and ratings. So let's modify our request to could you also retrieve the ratings and links for us and provide us with another CSV file? Once again, it initiates its process and shortly we're presented with a list of five products. I can see the ratings, but the links appear as none. Let's allow it to complete the process. Once it's done, we'll open the file to examine what we've obtained. As anticipated, the ratings are present, but the links section is empty. Let's assist ChatGPT in locating the links. We'll return to the website, right-click on any phone name, and choose Inspect. You'll notice that we have a span tag containing the phone name, but the link is actually located in the parent A tag. So what we'll do is copy the entire A tag and provide it to ChatGPT as an example. As you can observe, prior to providing the example, I've written, I wasn't able to retrieve the product link. Here's an example indicating where the product link is located. Once more, ChatGPT sets to work and presents us with the first five products and a link to download a CSV file containing all the products. Upon examining the file, we find that this time we have all the data we were seeking. If you click on or copy any product link, it should direct you to the respective product page. However, we encounter an error because an additional segment is being appended at the beginning of the link. Let's rectify this issue. Let's instruct ChatGPT by saying, you have appended this segment at the beginning of the product link. After sending the prompt, ChatGPT gets back to work. By now, you're familiar with the process. Let's check the file and as you can see, this time we have the correct links. Let's copy any link to verify if it works. And indeed it does. While we're at it, let's also cross-verify the name, price and ratings of the product. You'll notice that everything matches perfectly. Isn't that impressive? So this is the method we use to scrape data from web pages utilizing ChatGPT. However, there's a slight drawback to this approach. If you wish to scrape data from multiple pages, each page must be saved and processed manually. We can automate this process with a bit of code, which we can request ChatGPT to generate, but that would require us to execute the code ourselves. So let's proceed. As you can observe, I'm currently on a website named quotestoscrape.com, which is filled with a plethora of quotes. What I'm particularly interested in is extracting the text of the quote, the author, and the tags associated with each quote. Furthermore, I aim to automate the process of scraping data from all the pages on this site. Let's replicate the same procedure we've been following. We'll save the web page, upload it to the code interpreter, and then communicate to ChatGPT about the web page and the specific information we're interested in extracting.
Here's the output we received from ChatGPT. This time, it also provides us with information about the tags where specific data is located on the web page, which is quite helpful. It then presents us with some extracted quotes and finally, a link to a CSV file where we can view all the quotes from that web page. However, we notice some odd characters in the quote texts. Let's copy these and instruct ChatGPT to eliminate them. After downloading the file again and opening it, we have all the quotes cleanly presented. But to extract all the quotes from all the pages, we'll need to put in a bit more effort. If I click next on the web page and give the URL a good old squint, you'll see slash page slash number tacked onto the end. The number two here isn't just for show, it's playing the star role as the page number. After a bit of digital detective work, I found out this web page is a 10 page saga of quotes. We'll keep that nugget of info in our back pocket as we mosey on back to ChatGPT. Now we're going to tell our trusty ChatGPT Hey buddy, I need you to write some code that'll loop over the pages of this website, test.com. The page URL structure is like this test.com slash page slash two. And in each iteration, hold on to that code that was used to extract the quotes earlier from the web page file. As you can see, ChatGPT throws its hands up and says, I can't run a code like this, boss. But bless its digital heart, it still coughs up the code for us. Next, we're going to open the command prompt, create a directory, and pop that directory open in Visual Studio Code. Here, I'll open up a file named main.pi. Let's copy the command to install the Python packages we need and give it a run. As you can see, it's all requirement already satisfied for me because I've already got them installed. For you, it will start installing the packages. All right, let's grab that code from ChatGPT and paste it right into our main.py file. We're going to swap out test.com with quotes.toscrape.com. And just for the test, let's set the pages to three for the time being. All right, let's hit save and fire up this code. As it whirs into action, you'll notice a new arrival on the scene, a quotes CSVE file. Pop it open and what do we have here? A neat collection of 21 quotes, each with its author and tags. But let's not stop there. Let's swing it open in Excel for a more panoramic view. And there you have it, 21 quotes in all their glory. Now remember our little secret? This website has 10 pages of quotes. So let's crank up the upper value of our for loop to 10 and let the code rip once more. This time around, you'll see we've got a bumper crop of quotes. Open it up in Excel and boom, we're looking at a whopping 91 quotes. That means we've successfully scraped all the pages from that website. How cool is that? And the best part, we didn't even have to write a single line of code ourselves. But hold your horses. Keep in mind that this method is a smooth operator only with websites that aren't dynamically generated. And this is just one way to scrape data with ChatGPT. There are more tricks up its sleeve. If you're interested, drop a comment and let me know. I hope you've learned something new from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace out.